what we need to do in America is to get back to in God. Oh, oh I wish I had my dollar bill in here. In God. Oh, y'all ain't got it. Your trust shouldn't be in the police. Your trust shouldn't be in the White House. Your trust should be in God. The Bible tells us in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he will certainly blessing to you. There are so many of you facing doubts. There are so many of you that are facing fears. And there are many of you that will not stand up right. There are so many of you that say you love the Lord. And you know God is blessing you and you say that God is making a way. How many of you can attest that God is making a way for you? How many know he's already made the way? And since the way is already made, we have to say with me, walk in it. But what is God saying to us? What is God saying to me? So many times in our life, I sit back and I watch. I don't watch the world because the world's going to do what they do. And so many of us as believers are all bent out of shape because the world is only doing what they know to do. The key to it is if they don't see there's a better way, they can continue. So me doing what they're doing. Even Jesus himself recognized the divide. Say with me the divide. Say with me the divide. As long as there has been a heaven and there's been an earth, there's always been a divide. God does not like division. He deals in addition and multiplication. Now, if you're living in a place of subtraction and division, we need to check ourselves. Now, we're so quick to judge somebody else. We're so quick to say what someone else should and ought to be doing when we have not yet submitted ourselves to God. I heard a little rap song this morning, Christian rap, you ain't saved without the Holy Ghost. We can say we're saved all day long, but our lifestyle continues to do what it's been doing, then we're not, say what me, saved. It takes the Holy Spirit to save one. So there are a lot of us that go to church. We holler that we are, say with me, saved. saved. And you can't be saved unless you have, say with me, the Holy, the Holy Ghost. So what is God saying? What is God saying to us? Have no fear for tomorrow. For tomorrow will take care of itself. Ah, God pointed me to something. And I was sharing with James, if you hang in there a little while, God is going to show us something that the church, now let me show you something. The most segregated place you can go in America is the church. Now we want the world to operate better when those that say they know God can't get together. I'm not talking about the man that's hanging out there, or the young lady that's the lady of the night. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about us that embrace the sanctuaries or the worship uh, edifice every Sunday, and we say we know God when we don't love our fellow man. We have this self-proclaimed righteousness just saying that me, my foe, and no more than ain't what God's intent was. For when we didn't know him, he sent his son to die for all the mankind. According to scripture, John 3.16, it states, for God loved the world, and the world ain't saved. Watch this. The love of God even shined when we didn't even know him. Now, isn't it amazing to know that no matter what you look like, God looks at your heart? 
No matter how much money you have, God looks at your heart. No matter what school and what degree you have, you can have uh, uh, associates, you can have a BS, and I leave that alone, or you can have a PhD. It don't matter. And so we love to throw our credentials around like it really means something. It don't mean nothing if you ain't got love in your heart. According to Scripture, if you don't have charity, you become as a sound and breath. And just a, you're just making noise. And so a lot of us, even in the pulpit, call me pastor, doctor, doctor, pastor, doctor, pastor. The God ain't said that by calling doctors. According to Ephesians, I give you some. Prophets, evangelists, teachers, pastors. Come on, somebody. Y'all call the five for a minute. He never said, I give you a doctor. A theology. Y'all going to cry. Now, I'm not knocking it. I'm not, don't, don't get me wrong. It's good to go farther. Look at somebody say it's good to go farther. But don't allow earthly credentials override what God called you to be. You want to look down on folk. Only time you should look down on a man, April, is when you're li- looking down and lift him up. So, and so God is saying that we need to lift. Now my Caucasian brothers contacted me out of respect because God led them that they knew somebody was going to tell the truth. And so I didn't take side. I said, if we are men of God, we are bound by the holy, sacred word to tell the truth. The Bible says in the Old Testament, there's a voice come from behind me. Should I go to the left or should I go to the right? He said, this is the way. See, a lot of you are moved by the left. Some of you are moved by the right when God says the path has already been laid. The word says, the word is a lamp unto my feet. And a lot, I feel this thing today. And a lot, I don't care how much hate mail I get, I get anyway because I know Jesus. When I talk about Jesus, you don't like that, so you might not like this, but I'm going to tell it anyway. Tell somebody who's going to tell it. What we need to do in America is to get back to in God. Oh, oh, I wish I had my dollar bill in here. In God? Oh, y'all ain't got it. Your trust shouldn't be in the police. Your trust shouldn't be in the White House. Your trust should be in God. The Bible tells us in all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he will certainly. I want you to get real quick, John. John chapter 4, verse 9. I want you to stand very quickly. Those of you that are viewing, I pray that you get this word. I'm going to share some things with you. I don't know what my subject is going to be, a title. Whatever God says when I get to read, it shall be. All I need is the word. I understand titles. I understand how we are trained. But sometimes you just need to teach. Because right, right. what, what you want to be the title, somebody else might get a different meaning from it. Hallelujah. But out of that meaning, it will bless the house. In the book of John, and John was very particular. John himself record things that the other, Matthew, Mark, Luke, didn't necessarily record. So John tells a different perspective. Say with me, perspective. And it's good to have a different perspective other than other people. And when you can get a a, a perspective other than what everybody else is doing, you might find some joy. Just because everybody else is upset, you're going to be upset. The devil is a lie. I'm I'm smiling. I'm I'm, I'm I'm just bubbling over with joy about the breakthrough God is going to give us. And This message is not for the world. It's for the church. This message is not for the ones that are doing all that crazy stuff. This message today is for the ones that say they know Jesus. Now, God is saying if he can get you in the right place, everybody else will change. If you can be the example, then they have somebody to look to. If they can look to you, then you can direct them to who is really to. See, God will allow the glory to be seen in you to get the attention of those that don't know him. And when they get to you, then you can point to where it really comes from. Come on, say with me, God, use me. I'm a willing vessel. Say, God, use me. I'm a willing vessel. Let me just say, simply put, let's say, God, use me. Let's just, let's just say this is going to be your title today. God, use me. I didn't say your neighbor. See, before you get to point, and even point to the pulpit, you need God to use you. God needs to direct you. Let's look at this verse, and I'm going to read it slowly. 
so the closed captioning can keep up with me because I have a tendency to talk fast. But in all of this great thing God is doing is allowing me to slow down. It's good. Listen. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? Last clause says, For the Jews have what? No dealings with the Samaritans. You may have your seat. That sounds like some prejudice to me. <laughs> sounds like some racism to me. But can I just say it like the word of God says? Sounds like some ignorance. All right. All right. Ignorance is we lack knowledge. And there are so many of us that hide under the banner of Christianity when we really don't know who God is. God cannot truly use us, for in order for God to use you, you must know who he is first. You saying, God, use me, and you have not yet identified with your call. You have not yet identified with your place in ministry. So we hide under the banner of Christianity, and we take a few scriptures, and we take them, and we exploit them. Making them mean what we want them to mean. When the Bible said, don't add anything, nor take anything away. Now, I'm going to be very candid, candid today because in order for you to get it, I got to tell the truth. Amen. Can he use me? Here was Jesus. And if you begin to read the text, in the text, it, it, it begins to talk about that the Pharisees heard how Jesus baptized, and had more disciples than John. This is because Jesus himself was have been the example of if we allow God to use us, then we're going to make disciples. Hallelujah. And if you're going to make disciples, God has no particular person. The Bible said God has no respect to a person, which simply means he don't prefer any above the other. He just wants you to love him. Yes. No matter what color you are, black, white, in the middle, brown, yellow. And I hope you're not blue. If you're blue, something wrong with you. Go to the doctor and see about yourself. But we see these things. Even when you look at the outward, we also judge people based on what side of town they are. We judge people based on the kind of car. A car has nothing to do with what a person is. A person can drive the most expensive car and still be the most low down thing on the face of the earth. So, so we'll move by, oh, uh, I got to cater to this person because I'm not going to give no, no specific car dealership or a, a model uh, in, a, in a advertising. But because they drive this uh, six-figure car, we feel some kind of way. They must be important. Who told you that? And see, the world has designed us, and watch this, some of us are so programmed. Now, some of you are been out of shape, and you are focused in at all the propaganda. And let me show you this. Let me get this straight right now. Everything that's on social media is not true. Amen. You get on the phone, call your mom, and get your mom upset because somebody wrote something, and it's not even true. Somebody died. Them folks not dead. And you need to check, watch this, before you go quoting anything, check your facts. Hands right. before you take anything off social media. You need to make sure it's right and true before you tell. And so the church has become a part of Satan's bandwagon. Should we be carrying good news or bad news? I can hear y'all social media. If you can chime in, if you're on Facebook, should we be carrying good news or bad? Yeah. Y'all, but why is it that we get on our telephones and the information we carry is not good news? When we hear something bad about somebody, we don't. We we we. we the first thing we want to do is to share that. We all done been there. You might as well say amen because we're gonna step on everybody's toes. Time. 
we hear something bad, we want to share it. You know, Pastor Jimmy's team lost. Guilty. Amen. <laughs> Tell somebody, Pastor is guilty. guilty. Amen. The first thing I want to do is call one of my deacons, Deacon Gordon, and then I want to call and tell him, they lost again. And Deacon Gordon agreed with me and said, they sure did. When we should be calling and saying, let's pray for our brother. <laughs> does not the Bible tell us to pray for one another? I'm joking, but honest, does not the Bible tell us? See, we take these little simple things. See, Deacon Gordon just walked in on that. See, Deacon Gordon has a way of saying, they're losing again. But I told Deacon Gordon, Deacon Gordon don't call me no more. Call me when they're winning. I haven't heard from Deacon Gordon since. <laughs> but watch this. See, see, see what we missed. Let me show you something. You laughed. Made you feel good. Why do you allow evil and negative things to steal your joy? The Bible says a merry heart does good like a medicine. Some of you are so sick, not, not because you got ailments, because you're worrying yourself to death. Some of y'all, oh God, if the police stop me, what you need to do is respect, number one. Oh, y'all didn't say, see, you, you see, you see, I'm going to say this because every police is not a bad police. And the Bible said, vengeance is mine. See, the eye for an eye and a tooth for tooth was Old Testament. The Bible said we're no longer under the law. And if you're going to be, if you're going to be bound by that, you're going to be bound by everything of the law. Can I get a word, church, in this place? And and so we're so busy, young folks, get something in your head and stop acting off your emotions. We want to take matters in our own hands. All you think you're doing is incriminating your own self because you're going to jail. So, So what we ought to do is to see what God has I ain't studying that religious stuff. You'll be dead before the sun go down. The Bible says that death and life lies in the what? There was a man in the Old Testament. And see, y'all, y'all want to make fun of the preacher? I'm going to show you a little scenario. They made fun of the old preacher. And the Bible said two sheepy bears came out of the woods because they were making fun of the preacher. We're living in days. I'm not worried about you making fun of me because I'm going to tell you the truth. But there are some things that will kill you if you're not careful. So it's better to listen to wise counsel than to sit back and poke and make fun. But Jesus knew something. He understood something. He says in order For this love thing to work, I can't exclude nobody. If you look at the history of the word of God, you look at the history of the people of God, the chosen people was Israelites, right? right. The Bible said that in the New Testament, there's no difference between the Jew and the Gentile. We're going to deal with that in a few minutes. So if Jesus is going to present the New Testament church, that means he had to put down some old mindsets. This country has been here a long time. In order for the love of God to reign supreme, Jesus himself had to put away some mindsets. And I come here to kick some mindsets to the curb right now. Jesus saw a woman. Now, the Bible says in the text, before that he had need. In order for the father to use Jesus, he needed to go somewhere that really wasn't. But the Bible says he needed to go. I want you to read in your own spare time. The, why would the Bible say need? And God showed me this morning. In order for change to come, he got to use somebody. All right. All right. All right. Watch this. Oh, golly. Lord, I see. Normally, the Jews went around Samaria. Normally, the Jews had a path to go. But in order for change to come, somebody got to start walking in the hoods. Colors of different races got to start walking in places they've never been before. 
Better put the church itself got to start venturing off the porch and going into places that God needs you. If God is going to use you, you got to go into a different place. Amen. You got to change your route and going through the same way you went. Y'all looking at me strange. I don't care. Make it play. Make it play. I don't belong to you. Amen. You don't own me. No, you, you, you have no, no, no partaking what God is blessing. So I understand something. Yes. There's a country that's in turmoil, but nobody want to go. If we want to go, we want to go with knives, guns. When they start in their bus counters, just sit there, don't say nothing. That's the principle. He says, hold your peace. Now, I had a, some old people used to tell me this. You don't hear this anymore. An empty wagon. I guess y'all never heard it before. If you got something to hold you down, you ain't going to bet it's making up a ruckus because what you got to hold you down will bring you out. People that don't have enough got a whole lot to say. They're not willing to be used. They're not willing to go into the areas to bring change. Jesus said, I need to go. Now, watch this. In the text, the Bible said he didn't go with the disciples. He sent them to the market. You got to understand their mindset. When God is bringing change, he didn't say use nobody else. He said use you. If God is going to use you, you can't take every Tom, Dick, and Harry with you when God want to use you. You can't even take your mama and them. Pookie and them. Big man and little man and them. All these crazy names we make up. You give your children a name, they can't even spell them yet. And then in 12th grade already, they can't even spell the name. So, and I looked again, I said, why did the disciples have to go to the market? Because the mindset was that the Jews, and Jesus was a Jew, didn't have no dealings. Dealing with race and culture. We always say it don't have nothing to do with those people. How are they going to get the salvation of God if God don't use us to bring it to them? Amen. If I had to depend on folks, I would have stopped a long time ago. If God is going to bring change to a world, he had to be able to use somebody. So Jesus... Now watch this. Let me tell you, is it, it don't find it strange that when he gets to the well, Jesus posed a statement that breaks all being politically correct. Just because of somebody's sexual preference, you say, I don't want to have anything to do with them. You got to learn that you got to love folks out of sin. Amen. All right. All right. What if God took the same Mind said, with you, he won't have nothing to do with you with your low down, dirty self. But you in church every Sunday shouting and praising and, and falling, mess up a hundred dollar how do you could have saved your money. See, stuff like this, people don't want to talk. It's your money, you do whatever you want to do with it. But God wants to set all of us straight, including me, that you can't judge nobody. It's the grace of God that we all are still. And if we're still alive, we have an opportunity. Look at somebody and say, I still can change. I can still get to the place where God can fully use me. Now, see, God don't want no part-timers. So there's no benefit with part-time. I hope y'all can understand that. Part-timers don't experience. You want to be full-time to experience some healing. Somebody say health insurance. Some vacation. The Bible says he'll give you rest. Y'all come, right, right. come on in here. Watch this. PTO. Pay time off. God said he'll reward you if you're full time. Y'all ain't got it. And you know, on your job, you're full time, you have, go in. What happens? No, you don't have to get paid, you get fired. You will get fired now. Now, it's the reality to life. People that ain't, don't have no job are the ones that are raising hell. The people that don't go to work every day, 
got all the time in the world to find evil stuff to do to somebody else. Does not the Bible say that an idol mind? What happened to, to David when he wasn't doing that? Evil thoughts. And see, you're looking at the world. Some of them don't have anything to do. That's why they do dumb stuff. Teach, Anthony. Yeah, I will. Because we ain't saved without the Holy Ghost. God has to be able to use you and I fully. Say with me, fully. fully. How is it? See, you have to cross racial lines. You have to cross the divide in order to show the love of Christ. Jesus does that while, while dealing with somebody that his race they have no dealings with. So Jesus himself deals with racism and he shows her that she was, she was puzzled because he crossed the divide and she made, why are you talking to me? Rich folk don't want to talk to poor folk. And when a rich person do talk to a poor person, most of the time they think that they want something. She was in the same place. Why is it that you don't even suppose to be? She said, watch this. I have nothing to draw, and this well is deep. See, when we get off the surface of what we see and get into the deeper things, you'll find out there's more to living than what's on the surface. He showed her, I want to give you something that the world can't give you. I'm asking you. He gets her attention. Now, what is Jesus doing? There are a couple of things he's doing. I might just deal with one of them today. He's talking about hatred. Now I'm going to really Rock the boat. Look at somebody say, don't hate your neighbor. We say we love God in the church. Black, white, Jew, Gentile, ugly, pretty, beautiful, fat, skinny, tall, short. I think I covered everybody. Smart and not so smart. I want you to get 1 John 4 and 20. We shout over the TV airways. We become blessed in our ministries and we shout we love God. Some of us in the church are lying. I want you to get it. We shout and proclaim from the pulpit how much we love God. And we're not allowing God to use us, even in the church. 